Good evening, Raghav. Welcome to Madras Academy. Thank you. At Madras Academy, we try to bring awareness of the great educational and research opportunities available to the children and to help inspire the kids using our blog, MadrasAcademy.com. Your particular story is very inspirational to me personally and hope it will be the same for the children who are watching, going to watch it on the blog. Can you start by giving a little background of yourself for our young audience, Raghav? Okay, uh, my name is Raghav. I'm currently 18 years old and I grew up in Portland, Oregon. And when I was growing up, I engaged a lot of um, on, you know, high school research programs and things like that. I graduated last year and now I'm a freshman at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm a part of an eight-year bachelor's and MD program. So I'll graduate after eight years from Case Western with my MD. And I dance and I play ping pong as well. Okay. That sounds like a typical U.S. student, except me with the research part. Uh, Raghav, can you provide a quick summary of the scientific research that you have done and the competition that you won during the school? Okay, so there are three key um, research projects that I did in school. The first one I did as a friend, and that one was in hydrology, and that one recently got published this month. Um, it was research regarding flooding in a nearby area, because in Portland, it's very close to the coast, so nearby there's lots of flooding. So we actually were able to design a model for how flooding occurs and the effects it has on the community, as well as uh, make some future suggestions for people in the area and the government for how to contact that or combat that flooding and that was at Portland State University. The second research I did the summer after my sophomore year in high school and that research was at Oregon Health and Science University regarding Alzheimer's disease and there we looked at some of the specific proteins involved in Alzheimer's. Um, now for this project I, uh, I won first place at the state fair for the International Science, Intel Science and Engineering Fair um, called ICEF and then I moved to the International Fair in Pittsburgh. There I also won first place and best of category in cell and molecular biology and was chosen to present my research in uh, Slovakia um, late that year. Then the next research I did was on painkilling medication. That was actually at Stony Brook University, so I lived in uh, New York and Long Island for the summer to do that research. And there my research was primarily on the um, you know, trying to find a new type of painkiller that doesn't have the side effects that today's painkillers do. And for this research, um, I got two major awards, three I guess. One, I was chosen to represent the state at the International Science and Engineering Fair again. The second one was that um, I was chosen as a finalist in the Science Talent Search, which is a um, competition for only seniors. And for that, I went to Washington, D.C. and got to present my research to many famous politicians. Um, and the third one was the Simmons competition in science, math, and engineering. And in that one, I was first chosen as a regional finalist. I presented my research at a competition at Caltech for the West Coast region. And there I won first place, and I was chosen to present my research at the national competition, where I won sixth place nationally at the national Siemens competition. That is a very interesting scientific journey for a young student, Argo. Congratulations. Of all these, which particular such project or competition gave you the most satisfaction? I think um, the one that gave me the most satisfaction was the Intel Science Talent Search. Um, that was uh, based on the painkilling medication. So I guess research-wise, the painkilling pain medication one at Stony Brook University, my most recent research, that one gave me the most satisfaction because it allowed me to go to many venues across the U.S. as well as present um, in the in Oregon as well. And the STS, that competition, it was more multidisciplinary because it was mainly based on celebrating the research rather than competing against students once again at the national level. And there as well, I think, they treated us very nicely. We got to meet the president and um, present our research to each other and got to meet a lot of famous scientists. So I think that was my favorite one. So the Intel STS and the painkilling medication gets your top marks. Excellent. Raghav, right you said that you are doing eight-year medical program uh, at Case Western with full scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Did you also get the, this admission and the scholarship based on your scientific research at school? Yes. 
So the scholarship is called the Wolf Scholarship, and that one is given to one student per year entering Case Western. And the scholarship covers room, board, tuition, everything, um, as well as some summer opportunities in the future. And that one, one of the biggest things they said that drew them to give me the scholarship was the scientific research that I achieved, as well as I got some external scholarships from Intel, Coca-Cola, um, different companies like that who also gave me scholarships for winning these science fair competitions. That's very incredible. So apart from providing recognition, personal satisfaction, and meeting the famous scientists and politicians like the president, did you also get any cash prizes? Yeah, so many of the competitions I previously mentioned, including the ICEF, um, the SDS, and the Siemens competition, all had uh, cash prizes as well. Um, in, in total, I think the total cash prize from all of them, like uh, Intel STS gave around 8500 Siemens competition gave around 15000 Um All added up together, I think my total award was around 70000 from all the different um, competitions which I competed in, as well as all the scholarship programs which I applied for. That is some very serious money. Very good. Raghu, you seem to have won majority of your competitions at your high school. When did you actually start your scientific journey? So I think um, when I really started my scientific journey was in middle school. I think I started to get definitely interested in a career in science at that point, and that's when I wanted to pursue science more. I started my research project, the first one, the research in hydrology and flooding, specifically in the uh, between eighth grade and ninth grade. Um, prior to that, I hadn't done any research at this level, but I had done research um, such as you know science fairs in elementary school and middle school. In elementary school, I was think I was primarily exploring science as an option rather than a passion, a career. And in middle school, I realized that science truly was what I wanted to go into into the future. And in high school, I sort of developed on that more. Okay, how did you actually get interested in science? Is there any specific spark? I think the way I got really interested in science was in elementary school, I think doing these um, science fairs, science projects with other students, um, I guess two things kind of. First of all, doing these science fairs made me realize that the scientific method and going through hypothesizing, testing with data, that really appealed to me as a future career. And it surprised me actually that people do science as a career when in reality it just seems so fun, you know. But the second thing that I think that hit me is talking to some um, of my parents' friends who were scientists or were engineers and seeing um, how interesting their jobs were and seeing you know what they did, seeing what they did in their fields. And that definitely also you know made me interested in science at a young age. That's very insightful, Raghav. Can you describe for our young audience what are some of these stepping stones or the intermediate steps uh, towards your eventual success that you had in high school? Um, that's a good question. I think for me, some of the intermediate steps between um, the middle school level, which is kind of the lower level and the high school level, were, first of all, um, starting to read professional science. Um, that's one big stepping stone that I had that led me into the real uh, realm of actual scientific research in high school. I think starting to do... Um, this starting to read these scientific journals showed me what real researchers were doing. That's one big step I think anyone can take because they're publicly well available journals. Um, the other thing I did at a much younger level, I think, was, uh, like I said, meeting meeting people, meeting professors who did research, asking what they do, seeing what they were interested in. And I think that's one big thing that um, it made my step from doing science for fun to doing science as a career, doing science of passion. And I think the third big stepping stone for me was um, be doing these science fairs at a higher level. So just practicing that um, that hypothesis, then you know, background information, theories, uh, experiment, data collection, all of these things. That going through this process multiple times was a great stepping stone for me to um, then later get engaged in more advanced research. That is very helpful. Thank you. At high school level, you seem to have asked and pursued. Uh, some of the unanswered and original questions in science, such as finding painkillers without side effects. Yeah. What kind of scientific questions did you ask in elementary and middle school? So in middle school and elementary school, um, yeah, like you said, so in high school I was answering questions that hadn't been answered before, and that was the big leap that I took. Um, in middle school and elementary school, I was doing questions that had been answered before. So one of the things 
I remember early on in elementary school, first, second grade, I did research into um, seeing which type of fertilizer makes plants grow fastest or which type of antacid is the most effective. Um, things like that that helped me practice the scientific method and realize how useful it was to answering daily questions. Um, in middle school, I stepped it up a little to looking at the efficacy of solar cells or trying to design a filter for um, for the emissions from cars and things like that, or emissions from buildings, um, trying to design a program for doctors to use to dispense medicine. These were some of the more uh, more advanced, but still not <coughs> still not original questions that I asked when I was in middle school. That makes a lot of sense, Raja. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you reached out to some professors who helped you in pursuing your scientific research. How did you reach out, reach out to them? How do you think other children with similar dreams can get access to external help? So there's two uh, major ways that this is done. The first way is by emailing professors at large, and the second way is by going through programs. So the first way I'll discuss more in detail is emailing professors at large. That's what I did to find my research in hydrology. And that one, you go through people whose research you're interested in, and you email them and just say, you know, my name, I'm interested in your research. Um, please let me know if there's any position or if you can help me look at your research. If not, um, please let me know if I can come in and shadow you, see what you do in the lab. That's the most easy way, but it's also the way that garners the most rejections because many scientists don't have the time to respond to the email or even did. it. Um, the second way is getting involved in programs, and that's what I did for both the Alzheimer's research and the research at Stony Brook. That way is when you go through different programs um, online, and, and these programs are basically research oriented. So like eight weeks over the summer, you'll go into research in the university. At the end of the summer, you'll do a poster symposium where you present your research. That is very helpful information, Margo. Thank you. My next question is, what role did your parents play in your scientific research? Well, my parents aren't involved in um, you know, research per se, but what they did do was they supported the research that I did actually engage in. So for example, this could be as simple as giving me rides from my house to the university, helping me in meeting different professors. Um, in the actual research phase, they didn't help me with the research itself, but they did help me find resources, and I think that was the most useful thing that they did. Got it. Now, you mentioned earlier that you started your scientific journey fairly early while you were in elementary school. Uh, that will hopefully inspire some of the young guardians to start their own journey. Uh, but if someone is already in middle school and have not started their scientific journey yet, but the science bit, uh, but bit them now, do you think it is too late? Or conversely, if someone is early in early elementary school, is it too early to start their scientific journey? Um, I definitely don't think it's too late at all. I think, if anything, middle school is the perfect time. Even I know students who I engage in research with in these high school competitions at the national, international level who just started research in high school. I think it's never too late to start research, um, especially in the, in the field of science. And definitely it's never too early either. So reciprocated for those who are younger and are interested. Uh, you know, I, I know kids who have started asking original questions as early as fifth, sixth grade, and have already started these competitions. In fact, there's one competition that's made for middle schoolers, the Broadcom Masters Competition, uh, also run by Society for Science and the Public. And there are, there are programs made for younger ones as well. But definitely I think middle school is a great starting point. That makes sense. What research activities are you currently uh, pursuing at uh, Case Currently, I'm doing research in the field of dermatology at university hospitals for uh, Case Western Reserve University. And what I do there is primarily clinical, so it's no longer bench research. That research is um, right now I'm working on a project where I'm looking at past patient databases and trying to see if having one type of carcinoma, having one type of melanoma, makes you more likely to have more um, skin cancers in the future. Okay. Makes sense. What are your future plans, Raja? Um, so right now, I know that I'm my MD at Case Western and graduate with that, and you know, work as a clinical doctor. I'm really not sure what field of medicine specifically I want to go to in. Right now, I'm kind of interested in both neurology and dermatology, but I, I guess I still have to see, um, you know, where where that leads me. Especially in medical school, I'll investigate further my passions for medicine, see what specific field I'm interested in. Okay. Thanks. Raga, what would be your message for our young guardians who may be interested in pursuing their own scientific dreams? 
I think my method, my message to younger kids is that um, really anyone can do it, and it's no exaggeration that anyone can be involved in science. Anyone can ask these deep probing questions, and anyone can get involved with, um, you know, what they want to be in the future at a very young age. Um, even if your parents aren't that adept at, um, you know, the research that you want to do or aren't in a field that you want to be in, you can definitely look for opportunities. That's one message I would give them. And the second message I would give is don't be afraid of rejection. That's the biggest message I have because early failures in both science and in emailing professors, those happen to everyone. And even though it isn't reported, more science is failures than it is successes. People only report the successes, you know. So once you have a failure, definitely don't be discouraged. Use it as a stepping stone for future research and future science and things like that. That is very, very useful, Raghav. Thank you for taking your uh, precious time in helping the children learn as well as in get inspiration from your story. Yeah. Yeah. Did the kids have any questions and uh, post those po questions on the blog? Would you mind responding to them? or maybe having a group hangout in future? Yeah, I would definitely be open about answering them on the blog, or I can have a hangout in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Raghav, again. And good luck in your program and future research. OK, thank you very much for the time. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.